Phone Dog 101. Four G LTE WiMAX HSPA Plus. These are probably terms that you've heard a lot, especially in commercials for wireless carriers. One carrier says that their 4G network is the largest, another carrier says that their 4G network is the fastest, and then another carrier says that those other guys don't even have a 4G network, that theirs is the only real 4G network. So what do all of these terms mean, LTE, WiMAX? Which one is better? Which one is faster? And should you buy a 4G phone now? Well, this Phone Dog 101 video is gonna answer those questions and it's gonna help you pick the best phone the next time you're shopping. Now, you may be sitting there thinking to yourself, I already know what all those terms mean, 4G, WiMAX, LTE, I don't need somebody to tell me. Well, if that's the case, then don't watch the video. For everyone else, let's get started. So what is 4G? Well, the G stands for generation. So 4G is just the next generation of wireless technology following after 2G and 3G. As with any generational upgrade, 4G offers improvements in data speeds and call quality depending on which technology is being used. WiMAX stands for Worldwide Interoperability of Microwave Access. It's a long name, that's why they just say WiMAX. Not surprisingly, WiMAX is very similar to Wi-Fi, except it offers faster speeds and you don't have to be as close to the tower in order to access those speeds. In real world use, WiMAX offers download speeds of three to six megabits per second and upload speeds of one to two megabits per second. Sprint is currently the main wireless carrier offering WiMAX. LTE stands for Long-Term Evolution. It's a GSM technology that follows in the line of Edge, UMTS, and HSPA+. Whereas WiMAX transmits signals using microwaves, as the name suggests, LTE uses radio frequencies. In real-world use, LTE offers download speeds of 5 to 12 megabits per second and upload speeds of 2 to 5 megabits per second. Verizon is currently the largest carrier with an LTE network, however Metro PCS is also building out their LTE 4G network. HSPA stands for High Speed Packet Access, so HSPA Plus is known as Evolved High Speed Packet Access. HSPA is the combination of HSDPA, the D standing for downlink, and HSUPA, the U standing for uplink. Like LTE, HSPA is based on UMTS, a GSM technology. It is expected that AT&T and T-Mobile, currently the two main carriers with an HSPA Plus network, will eventually upgrade to an LTE network, as this logically comes next in the evolutionary path for this technology. In real-world use, current HSPA Plus technology offers download speeds of 5 to 8 megabits per second and upload speeds of 1 to 3 megabits per second. So now that we've defined all of these technologies, which is better? Well first, remember what I said about HSPA+. LTE is the next upgrade for this technology, so really the comparison is LTE versus WiMAX. The WiMAX rollout began much earlier than the LTE rollout, so there are currently more areas covered with WiMAX. That will change, however, as the LTE rollout has recently begun. One major thing to consider is carrier and manufacturer support. GSM is a worldwide standard, so more carriers and manufacturers support it. The same is true of LTE. LTE is the most popular choice worldwide for 4G. Now, WiMAX will still exist and be popular, but if you like the freedom that GSM offers, LTE would be a good choice for you. Some carriers charge an extra data fee per month when you buy one of their 4G phones, whether you're in one of their 4G markets or not. Considering this, is it worth it to buy a 4G phone now, even though these networks are still fairly new? Well first, check your carrier's coverage map to see what their 4G coverage is like in your area. Also, consider this. Current 4G technologies really only offer improvements in data speeds, so if you don't do a lot of web browsing, social networking, or streaming video or music, 
then 4G isn't really necessary. 4G technology is rapidly making its way onto popular wireless carriers and it's a strong selling point. Once you experience 4G speeds, it's hard to go back to 3G. Now, the next time you go by a smartphone, you'll know exactly what to look forward to, the good and the bad.